is corking? Basically, corking is a process, gap filling. Centuries ago, you would have corked ships to stop them leaking. So it's not a new word or thing. So when we generally talk about cork, it's your water-based decorator's cork. So all of these are water-based cork. These state acrylic sealant, which is basically the same as these, because all these state acrylic sealant. All over paintable, but you have to use the right paint and leave them to cure. Something very flexible. Personally, I don't really use it. I do in certain circumstances, i.e. side of kitchen units on painted walls, new, new units that have been fitted and gaps want filling. You can match in colours. So then you look at the rest of the cork because technically that's what it is but we separate them so there's no confusion. So again these may be called painter's cork or decorator's cork or acrylic. So then we move on to the more specialised sealants. Um, some may call them silicon sealants and some may call them silicon corks. But basically um, your corks are more of this side just to stop confusion. Talking about silicon sealants, polymer sealants, not necessarily referring them to corks. So then when it comes to silicon, um, indoor and outdoor, whether it be white or clear, generally they're not over paintable. So things to note are, never use it where you're gonna put paint. So tiles, ceramics, bathrooms, um, kitchens, tiles, work surfaces, perfect things like that. When it comes to using an exterior silicon, again, you don't want to use it for sealing glazing beads anywhere where there's going to be paint. Then this one, this is an indoor polymer. So again, doesn't necessarily state it's over paintable, but it's something that would be more durable and last better than some of your corks. And then this one here, both of these are exterior polymer sealants. Again, when I first was introduced to these, when I first picked one up off the shelf, it did state it was paintable. I wish I'd have actually kept the cartridge. Um, for a few months, it seemed to be going on. And then suddenly, when I picked one up and read it, it did say, unpaintable. So, I'm not sure what's going on there. And um, again, these are available in quite a good selection of colours. This one's a grey, this one's a brown. They are clear, white, um, and beiges as well. And then this one. So, this again is a polymer sealant, but this is states it's an MS sealant, which is a modified silicon. So, this one states it is over paintable. Um, but only using a water based paint. So, the job recently I was using Saddling, um, I think it's Super Deck, uh, water based, very flexible paint and works well, just works, it does. 
sits well on this stuff. Um, again, these, I have used them in the past and painted over them. And what tends to happen if these haven't cured, is it seems to bleed through the paint. Um, I've then started to move to using the clear to get around that. But now, obviously, I've discovered something a little bit different. So it's, it is a case of always having a look and reading and just seeing what suits. Um, and then when it comes to applying, have different guns. Because if you notice with these, they're a larger nozzle and a lot taller. So fit perfect in one of these guns. Perfect. Obviously, with one of these, they're just not going to sit in because of the size of the end and the length. When you are choosing your guns, then generally I do prefer using this one, mainly because this is a hexagon and it will not rotate so if you're using a fresh tube and in an awkward area that can be a nuisance so with something like this if you're working in an awkward space and the height at the end of this hook you can just rotate it move it out of the way makes it a lot better to use. Also, when you're up the ladder, when you're 20 foot up your extension ladder, and you're using something like this, if your tube is starting to run out, and you carry a spur in your pocket, and when it comes to change over, these are a lot better. Generally, you can hang on with one hand, hook on, and draw it away then you can just change over pop your fresh one in usually what I do is just transfer the nozzle to the end and with it being up your ladder you can pop it in the cage holds it this has a cage to the back and then simply you can just start off again these can be a bit awkward I've had them fall out on me so, overall, corking is one general descriptive word, but we do try and keep these separate, just to stop any confusion. If you was asked to go and cork a window, then, thank you, what do you go for? Your cork, or your silicon cork? Keep them separate. Terminology is there for a reason. And again, there's sealing and then there's bonding. So most of these can be used for bonding. The silicon doesn't necessarily state that. If you are going to use any of these for bonding, Two things you need to do, make sure the surface is clean and if it's a shiny surface, make sure you key it and then that will ensure that the bond is strong. If you fail to do that, then it can just come off, especially if you're sealing gutters, plastic gutters, and they expand, they move on the joints. And what tends to happen if you've not keyed and it's not bonded correctly, then over time they'll separate and they'll just leak again. The better solution for that really is change the rubbers in the joints. And then when it comes to filling any cracks and gaps with ease, ensure 
that there's no movement because that generally is what causes these to crack or fail. In that or the wrong type of paint on the surface, you'll need something flexible. And then do you paint before or after using cork? If it's burr plaster or burr wood, prime or mist coat first or seal the plaster with whatever plaster seal you're using then that way this will bond better ensuring that there's no movement and finally if you do come to use this stuff which it does state it's all paintable and then always try a smaller area first with your finish so if you're using a water-based paint then that's okay straight on with it if you're using an oil-based paint better priming with a good flexible water-based paint first so when i say priming it is literally just where you've used this and that way you'll get a better result with it And if you do need to paint over existing silicon, then I would certainly try using this over the top and then primed with the water-based paint. If you're using a water-based then that's fine, just go ahead. But if you're using oil, like I say, prime first with a good flexible water-based paint. You can use corks or acrylics, but again, Depending on the drying time, what type of paint you're using, I just tend not really to use these. Better to try something like that. If the silicon is rough, then you're better removing it, starting again with something better. But if it's good, smooth, and has already been painted and it's coming off remove the paint off the silicon and overlay with something like that